even more mistakes that you should not make in Valheim. Yo, what's up guys? So this is part 4 of my ongoing series. If you haven't watched the first 3 installments, check them out to know what I've already covered. In this video, I'll be going over mistakes that both new and advanced players tend to make that you should avoid doing in Valheim. Essentially, these are just a bunch of tips and tricks that you want to know about. And I've got a bunch of cool things today for you. But before we get into the video, let me ask you. Do you like broccoli? Yes? Well good, because today's video is sponsored by Indifferent Broccoli Server Hosting. They host servers for Valheim, but also host servers for other games like 7 Days to Die, Ark Survival Evolved, Minecraft and more. But why would you want to rent a server? Well, renting a server in Valheim makes it possible to have a world where you and your friends can 24-7 play on without you having to wait for a host to be in the game as well. And they have a very simple setup that takes less than 2 minutes with one button press to launch your surfer you get a two-day trial for free via my indifferentbroccoli.com link and yeah try it out without any risk and let's now get into the video and let's now end up mistake number one skipping secret loot so in Valheim you have a lot of chests spread around the map now most of you will probably have seen one of these by now these chests will usually have something useful for you when you decide to open them and that's nice right well there are certain places in the game that have secret loot that you might have missed so far for example, if you go to a Draugr village, which will spawn at random places in the meadows, you'll find some secret loot. And what you want to do in these villages is go through all houses and search for raven thrones. When you find a raven throne, it will usually be on a platform and under this platform there will be multiple chests hidden. You won't see these chests initially because, yeah, they are secret loot obviously, but just destroy the platform and you'll be able to loot them and get all that juicy loot. It's even better because unlike with normal locations where you usually only get one chest, you'll get multiple chests. Also don't forget to destroy the throne because this will give you a lot of fine wood and iron nails for free. Other secret loot can be found in the game with barrels like these. You'll find these barrels near abandoned outposts and these barrels can be quite subtle and you can easily miss them or just think that they are nothing special and skip them. But destroying these barrels will in fact also give you a nice variety of items. Furthermore, you'll also want to be on the lookout for shipwrecks. These are quite rare, but if you find them, they are really useful. Destroying the remains of these ships will give you a bunch of fine wood for free, and more often than not, they will also be buried and covered in dirt. And under this dirt, there will be another chest hidden. So excavate the chest, and there you go. That's even more secret loot for you. Mistake number two. Thinking you have to have at least bronze unlocked to get fine wood. So I just gave you a few examples of how you can get fine wood for free, but if you don't want to depend on RNG and random spawns, then there is actually a guaranteed way of getting fine wood the very moment you spawn in a new world or in a new playthrough. Many people think that you need to have at least bronze unlocked and more importantly the bronze axe to get fine wood, because the trees that give you fine wood are birches and oaks and they will require at least a bronze axe to damage them. And getting to that point in the game where you have a bronze axe will take some time obviously. However, you can easily bypass this by using some unconventional tactics. So there are two methods basically, and this is either by chopping down normal trees and then letting those trees fall towards birch trees to damage them, and afterwards keep rolling them towards the birch tree to again damage it, and you keep doing that until it destroys the birch completely and thus giving you fine wood. Oh yeah! However, the second way of doing this is way easier and faster, but you'll have to overcome your fear of trolls. So if you have a trollophobia, then yeah, you might just want to use the first method, but for the second method, you will want to find yourself a troll. And like I already showed in previous videos, just let them smash on you while you're standing near a birch tree. Every time when the troll starts his attack animation, you are standing near the tree and you press dodge. Every time you dodge, you'll be invincible for a second or two, and thus you will never ever get damaged this way. While at the same time, the troll will destroy the tree for you. And when the troll has destroyed the tree for you, you'll get your fine wood. But why? Why would you want to do all of this? Well, the main advantage of this is that you now can craft items that require fine wood. And a very good example of that is the fine wood bow. The fine wood bow is a lot stronger than the normal bow or the starter's bow. And it also introduces knockback. So having a fine wood bow at the very start of the game will give you a huge advantage and make your life much easier. So it's definitely something to consider in my opinion. Mistake number three, wrong positioning when mining. 
So positioning in Valheim actually matters when you're mining or chopping down trees. Especially for mining this makes a huge difference because usually there's a lot of room and flexibility for you in regards to how you position yourself when you're mining. So it's really easy. What you want to do is always hit a mine from above. You will do a lot more damage to the ore deposit that way Bonjour. in comparison to when you would hit it from the side or from below. So here's an example. I hit the ore deposit from the side. I only damage it with like 15 to 18 points. But then, when you hit it from above, you'll do a lot more damage. Here's another example. And here is a side-by-side -side comparison. As you could see from the footage, the difference between the different types of positioning is actually pretty big. Therefore it can actually make a tremendous difference over the course of the entire game. Because in many scenarios it will reduce the number of swings you have to make to break the node and accordingly get your ore. So definitely try to keep it in mind and hit those things from above. Mistake number 4. Not using shortcuts. So there's a variety of useful shortcuts in the game that you'll want to use when you're playing Valheim. Not using them can definitely make things more tedious than they need to be. So the first shortcut that I will cover is the Control plus left mouse click shortcut. Doing this will instantly put the item in your inventory instead of you having to drag them manually from A to B. This one is really convenient. Next up we have the split stack option. You can do this by using shift and left mouse click and this way you can make stacks of items or resources as big or as small as you wish. Furthermore, using your middle mouse button to navigate through the building menu is also really nice. Instead of clicking on the different tabs, you can just scroll up or down. Then we have Q for when you're running in the open world. When you press Q, your character will just auto walk and you don't have to keep W pressed the entire time. It's really convenient. If you then want to rotate or change the direction of your character that is moving automatically, then just press right click and move your mouse to the direction you want your character to go to. Finally, we have the Ctrl plus 3 shortcut. This is useful for hiding your user interface and it's a really nice one for when you're making screenshots or cinematics, for example. Mistake number 5. Being reluctant with using a shield. Now, in many games, having a shield is not always mandatory, nor is it always popular to have one. But the shield is really useful and important in Valheim, as enemies can easily f*** you over. So you can use it to block attacks, and it will block more damage than blocking with your weapons. For Pete's sake, I'm above average, I'm paying my stack. I got a matter what he say. I'm the 2010 and LeBron James off the bat for a type of bad boy. Hold it down for the task force. If I run his fate, then you ask. More importantly, you can use it to parry attack successfully. To parry an attack successfully, you will need to absorb all damage from the enemy's attack, otherwise it won't work. And this can be achieved when your block power in combination with your parry bonus is higher than the incoming damage. And parrying is incredibly useful in Valheim as it does stagger enemies, meaning it will give you breathing room since it's a form of crowd control and when you successfully parry an enemy, your following attack will also deal double damage. And so, for those that don't know how to parry, you parry by pressing the block button just before a hit would land on you. And you can hear it when you successfully did this, because you will then hear a bashing sound. That's why using a shield and making sure that you keep upgrading it so you can block more damage, and then accordingly parrying will make fighting against enemies like a walk in a park. So guys, we're halfway through the video, and if you made it all the way to here, then you might as well subscribe, right? Am I right or am I right? So smash that button for me and let's go, let's continue with the video. Uh -huh. Mistake number 6, forgetting about the sneak mechanic. Basically, many people scoff away the game's sneak mechanic, even though it's really, really useful in various situations. So every time you hit an enemy while being in sneak, and the enemy is obviously unaware of you, you'll apply the backstab bonus effect. This can be a really powerful bonus effect as it multiplies your damage up to 10 times depending on the weapon. Surprise! 
If you don't like melee weapons or you don't like the knife, for example, then you can still apply this really easily with the bow for a good opener. Just make sure that you see the enemy before the enemy sees you and shoot your arrow for three times the damage. No. Mistake number seven, not standing near the mast of a boat when it gets destroyed. When you destroy your ship yourself while sailing, or even worse, you get attacked and your ship is done so, you'll always want to stand near the mast of the boat. Make sure you have a few empty inventory slots, and the moment the ship goes poof, you'll automatically pick up all the items you'd otherwise lose. This is especially useful to make sure that you keep all those iron nails, as it can be quite tedious to make a large number of these. This way, you can rebuild your ship at a later time without any problems. It's really nice. Mistake number 8. Memifying the harpoon. Many people consider the poor little harpoon as useless, but it's actually more useful than you might think. Let me give you an example. So you can use the harpoon for hunting birds. And this is even better than using the bow, because it's completely free as you won't use any arrows, obviously. Same thing with when you miss your shot. With the bow, you'll have to undergo the entire aiming procedure every time, while with the harpoon, you can instantly shoot it and basically just spam it. So it's not only free, but it's also a lot faster. Another really useful aspect of the harpoon stems from when you want to breed animals. The harpoon can help out a lot with getting animals and NPCs to your breeding spot. Or basically any spot, room, place, cage, I don't know, whatever. Just shoot your harpoon and then drag them to wherever you want them to be. Let me give you one more example, because the harpoon is also really nice for when you're PvPing. It's an absolute monster in PvP, as you can use it to easily pull over other players and completely go ham on them afterwards. Get over here! So don't forget the harpoon guys, it needs your attention. Mistake number 9, hoarding and overproducing. So hoarding and overproducing are two mistakes that kind of fall in the same category, that's why I have grouped them together. Basically what this means is that you have or produce more of an item than you actually need. A good example for this is overproducing ingots of whatever material. I did this personally with bronze in my first playthrough, so let's take bronze as an example, because bronze is only useful in a part of the early game, so all the extra produced ingots were essentially for nothing, and that also means all the associated mining, searching for ore deposits, etc, etc. But this can be really easily prevented. When you're making new items, just go to your forge or your workbench and check out what they need. For upgrades, go to the official wiki, which is a really useful site, and just note down everything you'll need for subsequent levels of the item. That way you'll always know exactly how much of every resource you'll need. And for hoarding, this also applies because every enemy in the game drops items and items also spawn in the open world. But not everything is useful. For example, thistles are really useful and you'll always want to pick them up because they'll be irrelevant till the end of the game. But on the other hand, you have trophies which aren't that useful. Most of them are purely for decorative purposes. So if you have certain ideas in mind for architecture using trophies, then yeah, you'll want to get them. But outside of that, their functional uses are very limited. Deer trophies are needed for summoning the first boss and for making the stack breaker which is a really good weapon that you can get your hands on pretty early on and in the same nature you have the drake and the wolf trophies that are also needed for certain armor pieces but outside of these specific trophies hoarding other trophies will not do much for you as they will have no functional uses another example for this are the bone fragments dropped by skeletons these things drop a lot if you know what i'm talking about but they are only needed for a few early game items and they are quite useless overall so if you have a full stack, then that's more than you'll probably ever need and it's safe to stop picking them up. When you consider all these things together and you stop overproducing and hoarding, you'll save a lot of time, but also a lot of chest and inventory space. So it's a really useful thing to keep in mind. Mistake number 10, something something beehive. So beehives, you know those things, right? They are filled with bees where they work all day long to produce honey. And yeah, a quite subtle mistake that is often made with beehives is that they are not looted when they are full. So these things then stay full for ages without you even realizing it. And this is because the game does not tell you directly that the beehive is full when you aim your cursor at it. So this can be easily overlooked. But when a beehive has four honey in it, then it means it's full. So when you see the number four from now on, you will know what to do. Loot your honey so that the bees can get to work again. And this way you'll efficiently keep farming all that delicious honey. 
Yes guys, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something. Don't forget to like the video and if you enjoy my content then definitely smash that subscribe button. Even better if you also turn on the bell notifications. Check out Indifferent Broccoli Server Hosting if you want to rent a good quality server. Link for that is in the description. And yeah guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!